we have an awesome show for you guys today. The greatest defender of all time. Good news for the sport. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are here in our stressless studio, uh, coming, what is it, episode 23? 23. Yeah, it's 23. We're getting close you believe to it? our 100th episode, which is awesome, and... Uh, When's that gonna be? Well, we did the math, and I think it's like end February. of February. Yeah. Right? And so we'll, you know, do it somewhere between so February and July. So this is happy December for us. Yeah. I even wore a collared shirt for the second show in a row. You did. Are you did impressed? you have a great uh, Thanksgiving? I had an awesome Thanksgiving. You got good turkey? I made two turkeys and a ham, and it was all great. How about you guys? Is it all gone? Mostly. We left pretty quick after Thanksgiving to go to Jamaica, so. Oh, Jamaica. How was Jamaica? Yeah, man. I heard y'all laid out nude a lot. Well, it kept the population of the beach very minimal, so it was very <laughs> private that way. <laughs> uh, look, Shelly and Travis just came yeah. in. Yeah. That's cool. It's going to be great. Yeah, so we've got Travis Page coming mm -hmm. on and... Uh, you can do it. Oh, I can't. Annabelle... Scrimmager. Yep, you got it. Yeah, Show which is funny because it's spelled Scrimmager. Right. But I think it's actually pronounced... Yeah. Fun facts about Annabelle is she's been on a feed that we've been uh, back and forth with since Tokyo. Um, a feed? Yeah, the what? Oh, the what? Feed. I thought you meant horse feed. Dude, this is a horse show. Come on. It's not a WhatsApp show. I'm with you now. Okay. So, and, and she's great to listen to on different topics and actually was a uh, judge uh, on the ground jury of the first ground jury at Carolina that approved Briggs Walrus bit at the time a year ago. Right. So she's going to be great to talk to and then Travis is going to be fun to talk to. So well, I, be the goal for this show was to get two people mm -hmm. that were meek and quiet <laughs> That's not what we that we thought. could make sure that we could control during the show and have yeah. no controversy. Yeah, because you're very meek. Yeah, we got to measure up to it. So let's talk about some great things that's come out. We've kind of been back and forth about the new list. Uh, Wait, hold on. Yeah, okay. USEF list came out. So yeah. Yeah. a couple questions I have on it, but let's go through the list. We, do we want to read the list? Well, we know what the pro elite is pretty easy it's to go It's not through. even a list. Pro Elite? I think that's elite. a horse, again, that's a horse feed. It's an elite something. What is it's it? It's the Eventing Elite Program Okay, list. Pro Elite sounds good to me. That sounds better than the Eventing Elite Program I list. I know. See. Which is what? That's Will Coleman, Liz Halliday, Boyd Martin, and Tammy Smith. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. Read okay. it again. Will Coleman with Off the Record, mm -hmm. Liz Halliday on Mixmaster C, mm -hmm. Boyd Martin on Luke 140, mm -hmm. and Tammy Smith on My Bomb. So to you, who's missing off that list? I mean, I don't have a great memory. Okay, let's go to the next list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the name of the next list? The next list is like the Pro Elite that I call it. Right, but it's not the Pro Elite, but yes, go ahead. Go ahead, what is it? No, tell me, I want to hear what your name of it is. The Pro, do... list, Pro, Pro Elite in waiting. Nope, eventing pre-elite program list. And that's James Alliston in Karma, Will Coleman on Chin Tonic, Boyd Martin on Fetterman B, and Carolyn Pamuchu. I'm so good, I got that right. You got that right. On HS Blake, and then she's also mentioned on HSH Tolan King and mm -hmm. HSH Connor, and then you've got Doug Payne on Quantum Leap. Okay, so the only question I had, and look, I mean, there were several silver medalists at the Pan Am Games. Um, there's two people left off, and you could have that conversation, right? But Sydney Alley, it's been, been up there for a very long time doing her job and going over to Europe and having good results and then yep. coming back. And she's not on that list anymore. Well, and you could argue and be like, okay, is the dressage competitive enough? But they obviously thought enough of her to put her on the team, so. Yeah, I, I don't get that. You, yeah. you just brought back the silver from the United States and you're not, you're not on the 2024 list. Right. So my question is Sharon White was the other one, um, but I, I didn't understand that. Then, then there's bases for the de it's a developing list. You're getting closer. You're getting better at this as we go. That's the eventing development program list. Okay. So good job. Thanks. So that's Jenny Karras, who Jenny Karras, who just won. I know. Terranova, Hunter Inferno, Mia Farley, mm -hmm. Cornelia Fletcher, Jacob Fletcher, Emily Hamill, and Alyssa Phillips. And <clears throat> so, based on on that list, it's all score based, correct? Uh, hold on. I'm just we're trying to just enlighten everybody, right? Yes. So I think I can go through it <clears throat> from memory. Seven year old and the three. I've got month. it. I've got okay, it. go ahead. Okay. So criteria for the development training list uh -huh. is CCI five star long to have finished on a 40 or below, mm -hmm. CCI four star long to finish on a 36 or below, 
CCI three-star long finishing score of a 33 with zero cross-country jump and time penalties for horses seven years old and younger, or a finishing score of 30 with zero cross-country jump and time penalties for horses eight years old and older. So why did it use the zero cross-country and not on the other two criteria? What do you mean? Not with the other two lists? Yeah. Because the other two lists are more subjective. These, this is no, the first. No, no, I'm talking about... Oh, well, because they're saying at a three-star, you have to have had a very uber-competitive result. See, so yeah, I used very and uber. It's the same word, but right. different languages. Okay. Um, if you have a super competitive result at the three star and then at four star and five star, I think you still have to have a 36 or below or a 40 or below, which are competitive, but they're talking total score there. I don't know. Ask Leslie. I, I, I have will. no idea. <laughs> you didn't make any sense at all. I don't know. Because they decide, I think, I don't know. They want to make sure, I think the one thing is they want to make sure you're really good. But why not just. They want to make sure you're truly good cross country. So what no they're time. saying is if you end on a 40 score at the five star, but you had a, had a, some time. Cross country time. Time. You wouldn't so finish it, on a, you know, well, I guess you could, but it'd be unlikely. You have to be pretty Just a question. Good. Yeah. It always brings in to, I mean, and you, you t I called you about this the other day and you said that it's always been like that. I like it when you call me about this because you inevitably attack and I inevitably defend. It's just us. I, know, I think you were No, you attacked me twice. I did? Yeah. What did I say? I don't remember, but it was very aggressive. And um, <laughs> I was laughing because I'm like, yeah, this is, this is us. Rick's like, <laughs> As soon as you hear something, gets really upset, and as soon as I hear something, like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, Unless I was. It directly affects me, and then I'm aggressive. Right, I wasn't right. attacking. I just was trying to understand how this was working. Obviously, the list uh, on the, the the last list that you just gave with with those parameters then come into play. You know how important, and we've been talking about this, right? About the judging, right? Yes. Four to seven seems to be the span that that judges have been using lately. Not always, but it's an article that I came up with uh, 10 years ago. Yep. Um, and then if we're going by the basis of this long scores, yep. like, let me give you an example. Ready? Um, yeah, I'm so ready. Uh, Mary Beth Davis yep. on that really cool horse that she has. She was fourth at the four long yep. at Terra Nova. She had a, a dressage score, I mean, a dressage test that I think was lower than what she was given. And I, I felt that across the board. Yeah. Um, but because she finished on a 40.3, right. she had a brilliant cross country run, double show jump um, clear, not on the list. Well, and it's interesting, right? Because I think you still could get, I believe, still yeah, you, talent you, spotted on. Right, you keep saying that. I think but, you can. Right. I'll get, I'll get confirmation of that. No, I think you can, because Leslie uh, obviously said he can't wait for a little bit of time, so I think that's going to happen. Right. But also, to your point, it does then mean, which we need to talk to Annabelle about, Right. the judging needs to be more consistent then if we're going to base lists off of it. That, well, especially the United States, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what they, we can ask her, I don't know if she knows. And, and you know what, actually, now that I know that all these lists are based on points, I just want to put out there that I think the judges are incredible in this country and worldwide. You guys do a great job and they're all incredibly attractive people. Hmm. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the last list? I want, to hear, I want to hear what you call the last list. The last list is the under 25 um, potential making a team one day list. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> it is the... Hold on, that's not the list. Uh huh. And I have something to say about this too. This is um, the eventing emerging program list. Emerging eventing, and it's twenty five and under. It doesn't say that. No, I think. But it, it is twenty five and under. The criteria. I'm going to pull up the criteria. You keep talking. You entertain. Okay, me. and the reason I'm t on this one, I, I. Okay, athlete focus, talent identification, development, and talent confirmation program for athletes twenty five and under. Yes. Okay. Um, where I think in Great Britain, they're doing a little bit different. They're doing 18 to 28 on their, um, that, that type of list. Right. I think which is better because you're, I think that three year span from 25 to 28 is important. I think it's still developing for riders out there, the young professionals, people going up the ranks. Right. Um, and I think we, we boxed ourselves out a little bit leaving out that three years for additional riders to be on that. So Maybe, but they could just be better and then make the list above it. Yeah, but you always say that, right? Well, that's true. Okay. I think we need to be a little bit more... I think You want to be inclusive. 
not inclusive, just really good at what we're doing. Okay. All right. Yeah. What do you think about the last list? Um, it's a big people, list. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about it, but what's yours? Because you typically are very neutral about everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot of people on it. There's a lot of people on all these lists. I don't, I mean, I would be interested. I'm sure that as I say this, there'll be somebody who's left off that feels like they got slighted. Um, and I'm sure there and possibly is, is. Leslie's in charge of this list too? I believe so, yeah. So, yeah. All right. All right. I mean, you know, and it's, it, I just, again, it's interesting. I think we've all had the conversation. I think Lucinda Green is very um, avid on the judging as well. And I think. Sam Watson, actually, we need to get him back on the show. Yep. He's coming up with a lot of statistics of how dressage in not a five star, but in four stars is becoming 50 to 52% um, of importance for our sport. And I think that's way wrong. Yeah, we need to get him on for that, for sure. Um, let's finish it with this. I'll right. just say, if you're not on a list and you want to be on a list, just beat everybody who's on the list. That's true. That's the way to do it. Or hope that you can. Well, no, you just have to. That's, all, that's right. all you have to do. So with that said, we do need to take a break. We want to make sure everybody goes and supports the sponsors of the show. So if you got anything going on with your horse trailer and you are anywhere even reasonably close to Florida, Horse Trailer Pros is the place to go. And right now it's your time to do it because you're about to hit the road. Yep. And Horse Trailer Pros, Matt Taub is amazing at getting it ready. What, I, worthy. Yeah, what I like to do is wait till the last possible minute and then crunch them. Well, you always do that. Yeah. And he says, oh, we're back. Low. Yeah. You got three yeah. weeks. Right. But get in there. We, and we should we flash up the number for Horse Trailer Pros? Yeah, I'm sure. Joel loves it when we do that. Joel, make sure you can do you, that. Can you do that? He Great. says yes. All right. Uh, and then you need to make sure you go to centerlinedistribution.net. Use the promo code JR23. So you get 20% off of all your stress less orders. And pretty soon that's going to be JR24. Yeah, but for now it's 23. It is. Right. Thanks. Smile. <laughs> awesome. Make sure you smile. <laughs> Want to advertise on the John and Rick show? Contact John at 352-875-8622 or call Rick at 850-879-2649. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com. Aero helmets represent real change for equestrian helmets. Offering patented new technology and an unparalleled level of safety testing. It is the only Snell certified helmet with MIPS on the market. Aero visors are interchangeable, meaning you can wear your Aero three ways, with a formal visor, a sun visor, and as a skull cap. Our shimmable liner means you can customize the fit for your head and your hairstyle. Upgrade to Aero today. Hey, Rick here. Do you have a horse suffering from poor performance, anxiety and fear, low appetite, agitation or nervousness? Stressless can help. Stressless, the hot horse remedy, is veterinarian developed all natural formula that promotes calmness, focus, and mood balance in horses experiencing stress related to training, showing, racing, stall rest, and travel. This equine supplement encourages calmness, focus, and mood balance without affecting the motor skills or energy levels of your horse. It promotes a more willing and balanced temperament with no drowsiness or impaired function, resulting in increased focus, a calm mind, and a happier horse and rider. Try Stress Less today and see for yourself why we think Stress Less is the best hot horse remedy you will find. Check us out at centerlinedistribution.net and on Facebook and Instagram as Stress Less Horse Supplement. Hey, it's John here. I just want to let you guys know I got back from schooling at Magnolia Sands Farm here in Ocala, Florida. 
The cross country field is perfectly suited for a first outing on a young horse or schooling your upper level horse. Magnolia Sands offers over 110 jumps ranging from starter to intermediate plus multiple banks, ditches, and waters. They're constantly updating their courses and have even added new ditches and a starter ditch wall. Conveniently located in Northeast Ocala, Magnolia Sands has made it easy for riders and trainers with online waivers, Venmo, and PayPal, and even offer a golf cart for guests. MagnoliaSandsFarm.com. Equibrew, now available in the USA. It's a live probiotic that you feed daily to your horses. The live microbes go into your horse's gut and cleans up the gut wall, creating a healthy gut system. Equibrew is an essential part of my feeding program. My horses love to eat it, and it does a really good job of promoting gut health and also good behavior and great performances. It's something I recommend for all of your horses, no matter what they do in their careers. It's so affordable, I can use it on all of my horses in the barn, not just my top horses. Order Equibrew today by going to BrickfieldNutrition.com or calling 850-879-2649. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros in our Stress Less Studios, Travis Page, welcome. And I also want to say it's Equa Brews segment. Good memory. I know, right? Yeah. So Equa Brew is a great thrilled. live probiotic. Uh, it's the only live probiotic out there, John. Your horses are on it. My horses are on it. You can go to www.brickfieldnutrition.com and order it, and it just makes a big difference from tail to ears with your horse. So great gut health. Um, Travis, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Um, John and I decided that we were going to do an official quote unquote uh, show. So we wanted to have you because you are always out there, always the guy that we love to see. In the ring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so um, we want to talk to you about what you do and what a steward is required to do and what, what you try to hopefully enforce while you're there? Well, a steward is someone who wants to keep e an even playing field, make it fair for everybody, Right. protect the horses, and hopefully you'll never see us or talk to us. Right. That's the goal in the game. Um, we do tend to need to walk around some. My favorite phrase is, how can I help you? That way, if somebody comes up, they're usually more comfortable. Right. And they usually have this, that, or the other we need to look at, and right. then we can analyze it. Um, we read a lot of rules. That brings up, John, do you have any, any leading in questions before we keep going? No, I was just thinking that it makes sense that you tr try to make sure that if everything's going well, you don't see everybody, but I feel like I see you at all of the events. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a reason for that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, and, and Travis, it, and obviously, I think riders and owners and anybody in an event don't want to blatantly break rules, right? But there are things that they don't realize that you have to reinforce and say, hey, yeah, you really can't do that. And I, I mean, I can even bring up even like show jump, when you're going to show jump, stewards have to watch very carefully that we are setting jumps correctly. Um, and they're, to your point, you're doing, you're doing that for us for safety. Absolutely, and for safety of the horse. Right. And they even playing field for everybody. Most people do not want to hurt their horses. Correct. Most people want to go by the rules very fairly. Um, in every show, there's some little small thing, which hopefully you catch before they compete. That way they're not eliminated. Right. Um, so that's a good segue. So that is, y'all are very open, stewards, the TD, and the ground jury saying, mm -hmm. if you have a question about a bit or a piece of equipment or whatever you're using, please bring it forward before so that y'all can give an insight or, or a, a rule interpretation to decide if it's Correct. Usable. I like to do even more forward, walk to the barns. Mm -hmm. I think people are much more comfortable one on one than at a rider briefing, raising their hand and going, it's this, it's this, boots legal. But if you walk around, how's it going? Everything fine? And people will approach you more likely one on one. And then they'll, or they'll bring equipment later on. Would you come to my stall? Absolutely. Right. I mean, you're terrific. Let me tell you, we've well, obviously we've had a lot of conversations. That's because um, you're always in trouble. I, well, it's not that I'm always in trouble, but it's there's, there's always questions or things that are being used. You know, I mean, the whole bit thing back in the past, but well, you are always great to approach. That's well, what I'm trying I to say. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I try and keep a smile on my face and be more welcoming. I do can be a little bit stoic sometimes. That's all right. I have to make an effort to be more relaxed to face. 
I don't think I never noticed them being so. Is it you? Don't talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say. Yeah, you can chime in anytime. I was just told that to start the show, I have to smile. <laughs> so maybe yeah. that's something to think about. That will look at you and smile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time I see you, I want you to smile from now on. Is that it? That's it. That's the smile. <laughs> I, I, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Shelly, is he too stoic? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, there you go. Well, he has people skill failure as well sometimes. But I've never noticed that. Why is that? Is that just because we get in trouble and you're able to like... You don't see it. Mm -hmm. I just don't but see it. it's not people that are interactive. It's the people that are... Interested. Right, right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And the other great thing, John, you can pipe in when you want, but he's really you're great. You're doing a great job. He's really great because he has... You have the, the FBI, like, bit, what is that book that you carry around with all the pictures and all that? An iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that humor, yes. That was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> iPad, yes. yeah, so your iPad, so you can go through. Um, so tell me, and look, the conversations for the, the FEI, I've had a lot of conversations with headquarters on different right. things. Um, one thing I want to ask your opinion on is when the whole bit thing with the walrus bit came out, right? We started back 2022. <laughs> got the ground jury to approve it. I think it was Annabelle at Carolina in 2022. And there was always conversations repeating to a certain rule, right? There was reflecting a rule. So what I did is I went to FEI because I was prompted mm -hmm. to get approval from headquarters. Right. Mm -hmm. The FEI legal team sent me back this email that said, we are the ones that make the decisions. You should be presenting this to the ground jury for approval. And I was like, Okay, I'm confused. So what's your insight on that? Unless there's a direct ruling about the FBI is legal or not right. legal. Right, right. As long as it's not horse welfare, as long as it breaks the parameters of what is given to by the FBI rules, mm -hmm. it's okay. When you have a bit that's controversial like that, mm -hmm. it got approved previously at a show, and I think the Great Meadows... It was approved eight times. I first saw it at Great Meadows. Right. So you actually brought it proactively, sure, sure. which is really great. And um, the ground jury asked me, I said, well, it's been approved before, right. so you have a precedent. Um, is it horse abuse? I've seen the longer bits, bigger shanks. <laughs> right. Um, but, but then it went on, and I was proactive when you were going to Terra Nova right. and put it forward to the TDs firsthand. Right. That way they could have an insight and look at it which I appreciate. And then have a more educated opinion about right. it. Right. As opposed to spur of the moment, five minutes, look right. it over. And well, and my, my point is, I think y'all all did a great job. You did your jobs. You did what you're supposed to do. What my confusion comes in is Katrin Norrender and FEI at the headquarters. I think the direction for them is I would have rather them said, look, yes, we'll interpret this rule and this is what we think and then we'll put it there. And it didn't go that way, which is not anybody's fault, mm -hmm. right? And so at that point, I feel that rules should, and y'all do your job. You do what you can and you try to get the rule read and, and approved on site, right? Yes, but you can't have a rule for everything. Right. You cannot have a rule for everything. Yeah, every, you can't. Every half inch feather here, you can't, but to use of general rules, some things are limited. Right. Everything from, uh, bits, shank bits on cross country and dressage right. and most of the other things. There are actual measurements and you can make that. Um, yeah, and dressage has got the most illegal bits on the list, doesn't it? Um, yes, they're the most restricted. Right. As far as size also and leverage and dimension, yes. Right. Uh, cross country is getting close with leverage, but yes, dressage is obviously the most limited. And that's a shank. I think on cross country, just because I've now been reading a shank, it can't be more than 10, 10 centimeters, centimeters. From the so, bottom of the... It's amazing what we learn when we read stuff. <laughs> 10 centimeters from the bottom of the what? Bottom of the bit? The bit to the ring part. From the bottom of the bit to where the rain would attach. Yes. What if the bit uh, slides and has like a runner to it? You go to the longest part. Okay, so wherever it would be the long, okay. Yes. All right, so. I would well, have to go check out my bits. Yeah, I know, Find well, it's, bit. it's important. We, we got, uh, Shelly, what you got? Um, I think the comment about that particular situation that I was very surprised was 
the response that came back from the FBI was found in the bed rigs. For the bit stuff is what we're talking about. So I don't know if people can hear because there's no mic. For but. the bit, yes. So, but I think, I, so I just. Mean, I don't know why a bit rule is in the vet regs. Why is it not under the equipment? That's a good question. So why the bit rule is in the vet regs and not <clears throat> in the equipment regs? Go. <laughs> Come on, Travis. The veterinary department ruled that the bit was not legal. To be for leverage or tongue tie. Right. So which that, is that was there. Which is not the functionality of that bit because if that's the truth, it would have been it's allowed in the show jump. So there, there's a whole show show jumping. It was allowed. I think not cross country. Correct. But it's, the only reason it's allowed in, not allowed in cross country is for the ring, not because it's a tongue tire. So get the rule changed. I'm good. Well, with it. yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's not. Well, it just shows you things can they can get complicated, but, and you guys get stuck having to deal with point, it in the moment. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My point is. The FEI went and ruled that that was the reason. They then went one step further and said, okay, none of these rules apply. We're taking the bit and giving it to Dr. Clayton for her review. Mm -hmm. Send it to Dr. Clayton and Clayton come back and said, no, it's, it's harmful for a horse's mouth. You can't use it. That's what they decided, not on a rule. And then they put, you got, a, you got an entire page in our FAQs. <laughs> I knew we did. We got a whole page. So Rick has a whole page? Well, I don't have yes, a page. Do I even have a sentence? Maybe later. All right, perfect. So, <laughs> it, it, and I appreciate you talking. It's a really good example, but the one thing that I think, I believe you did say, and a lot of people get confused. Now, we do have a page for the walrus, but it's not legal in any phase. But they use the ring bit as, and it's confusing for some stewards because they see the ring bit and they say illegal. Correct. And so at first you think, oh my God, the ring bit's illegal in show jump when it's not because it is legal. And so that's kind of confusing. And I think you also deal with FEI people whose first language is not English. <laughs> so sometimes translation of what they right. mean and how it should be expressed and, and regulated is not exactly said properly. Uh, I hear you. Um, but we, what we can do is we can take a break and we can get off the walrus bit and talk about more things that happen in horse welfare because y'all do a great job. But I appreciate you answering my questions on that. Thanks, Equibrew, for the segment um, sponsorship. And we really love our Stressless Studios. We're going to hold on to Travis for a little bit longer, John. And then you're going to start coming this side with it. Awesome. We'll be right back. Equibrew, now available in the USA. It's a live probiotic that you feed daily to your horses. The live microbes go into your horse's gut and cleans up the gut wall, creating a healthy gut system. Equibrew is an essential part of my feeding program. My horses love to eat it and it does a really good job of promoting gut health and also good behavior and great performances. It's something I recommend for all of your horses no matter what they do in their careers. It's so affordable I can use it on all of my horses in the barn, not just my top horses. Order Equibrew today by going to BrickfieldNutrition.com or calling 850-879-2649. Grant Showalter has over 15 years of equine bodywork and saddle fitting experience. His technique allows him to identify and alleviate tightness in muscles. He uses trigger point massage to release points of restriction. Grant has over a decade of experience fitting and adjusting a wide variety of saddles. His expertise in equine physiology coupled with a thorough understanding of the importance of a properly fitted saddle allows him to quickly identify and correct any balance issues. Grant can also adjust your saddle on site. Grant works on all of my competition horses and I have noticed a significant improvement in their performance at competitions and their overall way of going. Grant's based in Ocala, Florida year-round, but regularly travels to the surrounding areas. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 484-639-4454. Hi, my name's Leslie Law, and we are a proud supporter of Jump for Joy. We've been using their portable cross-country jumps now for about 10 to 15 years. We love these jumps because, as you can see, they're very easy to move and we don't need to take another person on the other side and I could place this fence wherever I wanted to very easily. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros and we are still here in our Stressless Studios with Travis Page. Do make sure guys that you check out centerlinedistribution.net Go there, you can get all of your stressless supplements uh, for 20% off if you use the promo code JR23. Uh, so Travis, we were talking a lot about 
sort of your job and the rules and obviously got into the bit issues, which, you know, that's just one example of all kinds of stuff you guys deal with as stewards. Um, so why do you do this? Because you are the <laughs> first guy that when we get upset, we go to and you have to deal with us being insane. So what got you into being a steward? Yeah, good question. My wife was organizing shows and I was always helping out. Got it. And I saw people being stewards like, okay, I can do that. Then I started doing show jumping also. So I got licensed in both, right? Um, that way I can go to shows and get paid and I can see the best riders in the world and the best horses. Good answer. That's a, that's that's a great super answer. great reason to do it. It is a good, good reason. And, and Literally the best in the world. That's true. Yeah. With the best trainers and, and, so, and best everybody. And there. the best trained as well. Yeah. And I get to walk around and look at these beautiful horses. That's cool. So before you got married to Shelly, did you do horses? Like were you involved in the horse I world did. growing up? How, what was your story? Um, I grew up, my aunts and uncles were rodeo cowboys. Cool. Right. Where, uh, where, where were you born? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right. I met horses when I was in Alabama, a little small town called Wetumpka, where my aunts and uncles were. Right. Bronc Rider, Rodeo Clown, Bell right. Racer. Wait, wow. you were a Rodeo Clown? No, my uncle was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Toughest man I've ever met. That is incredible. I was going to say, that's a tough deal. That is a tough deal. I'd be walking the bigger limp now. Right. Um, I had ponies growing up. Um, we had three ponies. I had two sisters. Right. We had two saddles, two bridles. So you went bareback and I went bareback and a halter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to babysit my sister, so. Right. That's a cool story. That's pretty awesome. So right. horses all the way through or I stopped when I was probably sixteen, then it started up again when I was late thirties. And when did you meet Shelly? I met Shelly. You better get this right, she's right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was at Stable View. At a party being hosted by a fox hunt lady. Right. Oh. Um, the owners. The owners. And uh, oddly enough, I was at the bar opening wine because nobody else could do it but me. Right. <laughs> Good I, man. And I had my own corkscrew, if I remember correctly. You brought your own corkscrew. It's the way well, to do it. Well, they didn't have one. I had one in the car, but yes. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, that's cool. awesome. So right. you met at Stableview, and here you are today. Yep. How long have you been married now? We're going on eight years, December the 15th. Well, I can tell you. I'm, that's I'm coming up. up. I know. Happy anniversary. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. I smile when I see you two because you look so happy together all the time. Oh, so I, I think it's great. Well, Shelly looks happy. Travis No, Travis does. I'm telling you, I don't see the stoicness. I see <laughs> Thank him, you. I see him smiling all I'm the time. I'm a happy, nice person. You, you know what? <laughs> look, you are. But Shelly's not wrong. You're kind of like, you have, I because I know you, I'm like, oh, there's Travis. But when I didn't know you, I was like, oh, I think I'm in trouble. I did you ever did feel that? Well, I never felt that. Thank the, you. I'm so my new favorites, <laughs> right, right, I'm in trouble. What I meant to say was you're a super charming guy. <laughs> so okay. we have also yeah. Okay, and cute, yeah, super attractive. So you you mentioned doing the show jump, and I see you at show jump a lot at WEC, right? So oh, yes. How different is is the environment of jumper land versus eventing jumper land? Um, I do a lot of FEI jumper land. Right. Um, it is very uniform. Like for example, you have a chief and four stewards. Right. In eventing, you may have one steward or assistant. The longs you would may have more. There always have skier stabling in jumper land, FEI. Right. Um, it's a, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and five. Right. Everybody. Right. Right. Um, the stewards do it full time. Uh, in eventing, the stewards do other things, and they may do three, four, five shows a year, I think. Right. Um, there's a few of us now who do it more. Beth Davison, she's pretty much professional TD and the dressage and show jumping, et cetera. Um, I do it a lot. Right. Yeah, I do. I, I see you a lot. But so that brings to the course that in the, because I notice and it's tough because we have three phases in eventing. We have a lot of stuff going on here. There's one phase, one thing that they're doing, right? Yes. So it, it is, and it, especially at WEC, I mean, it's super organized. You have orders of go, you have ways of every, filtering in and filtering out, which is great. And, and I think some events, unfortunately, due to budgets and all kinds of stuff, have a hard time trying to 
emulate that kind of system. And in Vinny, it's extremely hard. You have cross country. Right. La land required. The jumps alone. Right. The safety measures, everything from medics to uh, cross country repair, crowd control, a lot more people. We're in pure show jumping. You're right there. A few judges, bell ringers, timers, right. NK guy, the stewards. So you can see why there is a difference then, Oh, right? yes, absolutely. Right. Um, and then you, when you're talking about cross country, then you have, so how involved, uh, like when you have at an event, you have show jumping going on and you have cross country going on. How hard is that pull? And do you all do a good way of advising how that, that happens? Both at the same time in FEI is extremely hard. Right. Um, in the perfect world, Terra Nova's last event was a perfect world for me. Okay. Um, I had secure stabling. They had hired people to actually do the end gate in and out there. Right. Um, I had enough stewards hired, thank goodness. Yeah, the, and, the, and it, it was good. Yeah, I was going to just interrupt and say that was the most smooth event that I have been to as far as the stewards and officials ever. Like, it was great. Everywhere you went, you saw, saw a steward. They were super helpful. It was awesome. Thank you. I will tell my team. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I'm not, like, legit. It was... I, I, I noted it. Even more so tell Terra Nova. Mm. I'm telling Terra Nova. You guys did a great job. <laughs> the the only thing I want to point out about Terra Nova, <laughs> the, only, the only flaw, and it's because they allowed uh, one, two, and three in with the four mm -hmm. star, which is cured, right? Oh, stabling, when, right. When, when they did um, the drug testing. We, I just happened to, again, get drug into that one, no pun intended, but we had to go from the because we were a two star, yep. but so everybody thought we would be in the other stabling, so we had to go all the way down. Why were you in the secure stabling? Because we had four star horse, so we all wanted to, we all come together with all our equipment. Right. Yeah. So that's why why we're yeah. in this. Um, that is, drug testing has their own system, their own game. Mm -hmm. They are isolated from anything. I can say I help them. Right. Perhaps I could advise them earlier. Let's do it in secure stabling, but I didn't know until. Right. They showed up at the competition. That they were there. They were there. Yeah. So um, they just show up. They do. Usually you get a heads up, the Chief Stewart does. Right. A little bit beforehand, but not always. Uh, we actually prepared for that situation in the secure stabling with testing stalls. Which you did. You had testing stalls um, there. Testing stalls, shavings, zip tight in place, ready to go. Right. They decide to be in the main barns, everything. Right. Right. That is their decision. So, <laughs> yes. But I think that, not that part of it, but it is part of the deal of the drug testing is they don't want you really to have a heads up like no i uh, get that no, right. it's I, just you know I, i've i've been through the drug testing this is nothing to do with stewardship or anything it's mm -hmm. just the drug testers come in and they have their protocol what they do right sure. it's just very difficult this is why i experienced i'd never experienced it before and that's why i kind of was talking about it was they came they were used to them they that course is going to be tested they follow you back to the stall right typically you do all the things you typically do and don't interrupt. I couldn't give the horse water. I couldn't wash it off. I had to take it down. I, I was like, what's going on? I got to give it water. That is not common. Um, usually you don't want the horse to go in his own stall. Right. They will tend to pee, but you let the people take all the equipment off. Hosing down is very common. That's the whole, especially off cross, cross country. Right. If you're going to drug test a horse, you want it cooled down, walk yeah. off sure. a little bit. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, and this um, not to put you on the spot, I was a little, oh, no. little bit, Take him back. I think you even you even showed up. I don't know if somebody radioed Rick set testing. You better go talk to him. But no, no. I, I was like, you just. This is why up. you have a whole page. I know. Rick. So but, I have a super important question. Right. If I can interrupt. Sure. Because I don't think everybody knows that Travis is like a karate master. What is your What is your rank? I'm not a master. Yeah, I'm just, far from it. <laughs> but this is in a layman's terms. But a karate he, he, master. He wants to call you Yoda master now. So yeah, right. So yeah. so what is your rank? Um, my rank is sixth degree black belt in karate. I'm the second degree black belt in judo. That's so cool. So like first degree black belt in Japanese sword. I'm working on my sword rank now. Dude. That's so. I mean, that's awesome. So just between us, have you ever been at a competition and wanted to just like karate chop a guy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I used to do bare knuckle Japanese full contact fights. So can you do like the three finger punch thing from mm -hmm. that? Not, even, that movie? not anymore. You could. That was Bruce Lee. He was yeah. he was beyond most people. Right. 
So That's pretty cool. What, so you're like the Bruce Lee of stewards, is what I'm getting out of this. I'm more stoic and plan and think, right? He just called himself stoic. Yeah, you did. You said you were, you were saying you weren't, but don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I think it's. Always, I know that is very. It's cool. always interesting to know like the other stuff people do. Well, I think the other thing that you brought up to uh, Travis is that you and other stewards, y'all, all try to get together and have communications and and do things back and forth so that you can all learn from each other when you go to different shows. So Absolutely, we have three or four on. We'll text back and forth and watch this, and I have a Facebook page which. Most of the U.S. stewards are on, so we can compare odd equipment, right? Fun things that happened, no names involved. Rick Love showed up you. with us today. <laughs> Rick again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this. Uh, awesome. And then we can learn and make sure we're all on the same page. So. And I think it's great. Look, you know, I I love all the stewards. I really do. I think y'all do a great yeah. job. Uh, you know, you do your job. You try to yeah. be do the best thing and be fair. So I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. You. Yeah. Next show, something bad's gonna happen to Nothing. <laughs> Bring it over. No. Awesome. Awesome. I can, I can always find a rule for you. I know you can. I'm sure you will. Travis, thanks for coming on. You're yeah. welcome, sir. Thanks we appreciate for, it. For being here. And we are going to take a break, and then we're gonna have Annabelle Scrimmager in the virtual Stressless studio. So we're yep. excited about her being able to sort of zoom in for us. Uh, so make sure again you guys go to centerlinedistribution.net, use the promo code JR23 to get 20% off of your stressless orders. Also, if you have any horse trailer issues, Horse Trailer Pros is the place to go. We'll be right back. Horse Trailer Pros. Jump for Joy fences are easy to move, lightweight, durable, and low maintenance. So we're out here on the cross country. We just finished over in the show jumping over the Jump for Joy fences. Had a great time schooling over them. They're really nice and easy to move, so we were able to adjust some things and really have the exact school that we needed thanks to the Jump for Joy fences. I love them. Order yours at jumpforjoyusa.com. Aero helmets represent real change for equestrian helmets, offering patented new technology and an unparalleled level of safety testing. It is the only Snell certified helmet with MIPS on the market. Aero visors are interchangeable, meaning you can wear your Aero three ways, with a formal visor, a sun visor, and as a skull cap. Our shimmable liner means you can customize the fit for your head and your hairstyle. Upgrade to Aero today. Since 1950, Maison Forestier has been offering its know-how to design custom-made saddles for passionate riders. In 2016, Maison Forestier took a turn and expanded into the sports world with the goal of improving the performance of the rider-horse pair. You will find a professional, reactive, and fun team to answer your needs. And this is why I have chosen Forestier for all of my saddlery needs. Feel free to contact the saddle expert in your area for more information by visiting www.forestier.com. Hey, it's John here. I just want to let you guys know I got back from schooling at Magnolia Sands Farm here in Ocala, Florida. Their cross-country field is perfectly suited for a first outing on a young horse or schooling your upper level horse. Magnolia Sands offers over 110 jumps ranging from starter to intermediate plus multiple banks, ditches, and waters. They're constantly updating their courses and have even added new ditches and a starter ditch wall. Conveniently located in Northeast Ocala, Magnolia Sands has made it easy for riders and trainers with online waivers, Venmo, and PayPal, and even offer a golf cart for guests. MagnoliaSandsFarm.com Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and we are here in our virtual stressless studio with uh, the one and only Annabelle Scrimmager, who is one of the top officials and judges in the sport of eventing, and we're really excited and thrilled that you agreed to come on. Very nice to be here. Yeah, so before we get to it, I do just want to say and remind everybody, if you go to centerlinedistribution.net, use the promo code JR23, you can get 20% off of Stressless, which is a great product to sort of help keep your horses calm and focused. Um, so make sure you use that promo code and go check it out. Makes a great uh, stocking stuffer, guys. So go do it. Um, so Annabelle, um, we really appreciate you coming on. And I think we'll just get right to it. I know one of the big hot topics that we've been discussing, particularly on our uh, little WhatsApp group, has been judging and scoring. And so um, I'm going to let Rick get into that. But before we get right into that, I want to ask you sort of what was it that 
made you get into officiating and want to want to take this huge task on where you get riders like mm -hmm. us coming in and saying, wow, we think you need to do this or you need to do that. Like you have to be um, a special person to want to do that. <laughs> well, um, you have to remember, I started a very long time ago. Um back in the 80s so um um in those days uh, there wasn't quite the same sort of um rider input as there is now it was it was a they they were much more obedient in those days <laughs> <laughs> that's a good word <laughs> um and um um i'd had a very good career through juniors and and um um uh, my sort of Nope, you froze. See if we get Annabelle back here. Twenties and so on, and then all the big, the big ship horses started. You're Am good. I here? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you got it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, the big teams of sponsorship horses starting, um, and um, uh, I just had the one advanced horse, and I really felt I was competing at a, uh, you know, he wasn't the most robust horse. He probably only compete once every five or six weeks, and so I felt I was competing at a big disadvantage and it, it was becoming less and less enjoyable so I wanted to stay involved with the sport and I'd uh, done a bit of judging and so when I was in my mid-20s BE approached me and said did I want to think about going on the FEI list um, and so I did um, and I was very lucky in that um, a wonderful lady called Isabel Reed rather sort of mentored me and helped me um she'd be my chef to keep in juniors and and uh so I knew her pretty well and and um and she steered me through my first few events and um and away it went from there got it that's great Annabelle thanks for um the insight back I know you and Lucinda evidently were on the same pony club uh early on she said that you were when you were way younger y'all started out in the same area so you kind of saw each other and knew each other you know, and you know, Lucinda Green is a big advocate for all of us, and we love the conversations that we all get started with. Um, what is your take on, you know, we talk a lot about the influence of cross country, the influence of show jumping and dressage, I kind of mix that all up. But, um, you know, we've, we've had a little bit of a debate um, on seeing a migration of, of what I see um, scoring going to the four seven i know we use that that in the the feed um and that what is your insight you were we had you in carolina believe in 2022 um that's you, right we are great seeing you there and we've had experiences with you so give us your as a judge you know your insight when you're going in and you're doing your job and it's it's a tough one no, no doubt um <laughs> your insights on that well, um, I go into, I mean, my um, philosophy is that um, I want to, um, I want to be fair to everyone. I just want uh, it to be as, as, um, as good an occasion for everyone as possible. When I'm judging, um, which is, is not the beginning of my competition, uh, because we've done the course walk and 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 all yeah. that first. Um, um, I don't care who the rider is or what or anything. If it's good, it's good, and if it's not, it's not. Um, and um, and I'm not afraid to um, to tell people. Um, and it's the same with with the course walk as well. And and. This is a slightly difficult sort of scenario, I find, because, um, um, you know, if organisers and, and course designers and, and so on want, um, don't want you to interfere, basically. And I don't want to interfere, but if it's not right, I, I will say so. Um, and that doesn't always... Um, uh, make for more invitations if you like um, pe people tend to um, want the people who just uh, let things go but um, but if so I, so I have a question on that Annabelle because yeah I'm a little curious here and I know I should know this but 
let's say hypothetically you go out and you walk a course and you see a fence that just isn't right or a combination that just isn't right and you know it, the other ground jury members know it. Um, who makes the final decision as to whether or not that combination or fence gets changed? Is that up to you or the course designer? Like, I know it's a team thing and you guys always work as a team, but at the end of the day, I'm assuming somebody has the final authority. How does that work? Well, um, in the grand scheme of things, the buck stops with us uh, as grand jury. Right. Um, but uh, but it's not quite as simple as that um, because um, you ha sometimes have to use quite a lot of powers of persuasion and you have to... Oh, we paused again here. Hopefully we'll get you back in a second. I do always think, Rick, that's super interesting. Like, oh, there we go. We See, got you back. There you use froze yeah. for a second. Yeah. Um, the... Um, um you know you you have to use powers of persuasion and you have to weigh up in your own mind how much you are concerned about the the fence um as to whether um it really matters it, it's not our job to like it it's our job to make sure it's safe sure um or hopefully safe and at the level um so that's where we might ask um for a bit more of a ground line or a bit of this or a bit of that or or something just to to change it um interestingly i think we get more fences that are below the level than above the level um right. don't very often get them um above the level um and so um it, it's um um you have to have you know nothing's going to get done if if um uh um well, the td and the uh, the there course design side so so you make it a sort of collective but 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 they have to um but at the end of the day if it goes wrong it's your responsibility got not it theirs. okay yeah, no, I just always think that's super interesting because as a competitor, you come in and you talk to the group, which I think is fair, um, hmm. but but you do wonder, you know, who really makes that decision because a lot of times it feels like it's the designer and I'm assuming, fair enough, it's their course. They're going to have a big influence and try to convince you guys that they got it hmm. right. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put it out there. Yeah, um, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, you've got... Um, um, yeah, and it's not that we want to wade in. I mean, we hopefully just walk around and, and say thank you very much. Yeah, that all looks great. But um, um, uh, but if there's something we're not comfortable with, um, we have to have a, a discussion. Perfect. Let's do this, Annabelle. We're going to take a quick break because we're right at our, our limit here for this segment. And then we're going to come back and uh, we'll hopefully get a little bit more into the dressage scoring conversation that we've been having. I think that's a really interesting one to go into. So yeah. we're going to be we're going to be right back with uh, Annabelle Scrimmager in the virtual stressless studio. And a big thank you to Horse Trailer Pros. Remember, guys, if you have any horse trailer issues and you are anywhere within like I don't know twenty four hours of Florida, Horse Trailer Pros is the place you want to go. You want to give Matt a call over there and get all of your horse trailer safety needs taken care of. It is the perfect time of year for that because a lot of us are on a little bit of a vacation. So send the trailer in, get it fixed up so you're ready to hit the ground running or hit the road running and get to all your competitions. I we'll think right you back. covered like half the country with that 24 hour. Around That's why I did it. <laughs> That's probably like 36. You could come from California. It'd be worth it. That's right. All right. We'll be right back. For a horse owner on the road, your trailer is essential. No one enjoys being stuck on the road. At Horse Trailer Pros, we repair, renovate, and maintain all makes and models of horse trailers. We work directly with your insurance company or manufacturer for warranty repairs and insurance claims. Our state-of-the-art facility provides quick turnaround and friendly customer service. Considering a living quarter conversion, we do those too. Find comfort on the road with Horse Trailer Pros. Call or text 352-804-2131. Horsetrailerpros.com Welcome to the hunt. The pursuit of greatness awaits and we're on a mission to conquer our goals. 
Every step we take, every lift we make, we are driven by an insatiable hunger for excellence. There are no limits, no boundaries that can hold us back. We may have different objectives, but we share a common purpose, to push beyond our limits and achieve the extraordinary. Like a pack of fierce and unstoppable warriors, we stand united, a community of relentless individuals who refuse to settle for mediocrity. Obstacles, they're just stepping stones on our path to success. We welcome them, learn from them, and rise above them. We celebrate each other's victories and lift each other higher, inspiring greatness in one another. At CrossFit eFit, we don't just hunt for success, we embody it, breathe it, and conquer it. Prepare yourself because this isn't for the faint-hearted. This is for those who crave the thrill of pushing beyond the ordinary. CrossFit eFit, on the hunt. <laughs> Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros, and thanks to Stressless for our virtual term, uh, virtual studio. Annabelle Scrimmager is still here with us. Annabelle, it's it's a pleasure to have you on the show. You know, we love having insight from all around, and I think we had, I don't know if you know this, we had um, Travis Page, uh, steward for FEI Steward, come on, yes, on uh, earlier segments, and just mm -hmm. talk about what's going on in our sport, you have a lot of insight. You're there. You know, you, you're you seeing the ground running a lot. Um, and we're back on the dressage influence in our sport. I know we have, there's a difference between the influence of the dressage and then the way that the way that the um, dressage is being scored currently mm. or maybe a percentage yeah. of it. I, I wouldn't say it's all around, but I keep on going to this four seven. Tell us about you're not afraid to use one twos you're not afraid to use eight nine ten right no absolutely right exactly so do you see do you see it or is it just something that we're seeing over in the united states a four seven box well i think what you have to be aware of is that the majority of the work we see is before between a four and a seven or maybe a 7.5 um um so of course um the majority of the marks will be in that range um um and and after all if if a rider rides consistently for 7.5 and gets it they're on a 25 right um so um that that's not a bad score um yeah um, I guess in, insight to that is I agree with you, a percentage, of, we're four to seven, but I think what we're seeing is where a four for one horse was a four, yeah. it was either scored a 5.5 .5 or a below that. So that's where the discrepancy comes in. When that box gets uh, pigeonholed for a ride that really was higher than a four, it was lower than a four. Yeah, I mean, um, there are certain things that we uh, um, have to give a a four for, regardless of uh, how well the test is going and whoever it is. Right. Um, you know, it's it's uh, if the horse makes a change late behind, it's a four. Um, if a horse um, breaks in an extended trot, it's a four. Um, um you know and the, and there's there's no um way around that right. if the horse doesn't walk it's a four or below um and um um and it doesn't matter if the horse has been on eights and nines all the rest of the way um I mean, it's unlikely that you'll be on eights and nines and then not walk but um but you might miss a change or something um so, and then and that's in and, and those make sense so and it's, I've been hearing this a little bit, this kind of in my head. If a judge sees a horse in a frame that's not quite to the level, just a little bit mm -hmm. off the level, that then their their score range can't go to 10. It could only go to eight. Do you exactly. use that concept? Is that yes? Is that I mean, possible? yes. My my um my concept is that uh, in my mind, I don't compare one horse to another i compare off a off what i uh, perceive as a as a um, 
virtually perfect image. Um, Good. Uh, and then and, you categorize it that way. Yeah, exactly. And and also um, in my philosophy is two things that you're, you're unlikely to get the perfect scenario, but 10 is only excellent. Um, so you're not looking for total perfection. Right. Um, having said that, um, um, you know, it has to be really genuinely, truly excellent, not just good or very good, uh, which is eight or nine. Um, when you have the horse that's not quite um at the level for me it might be a horse that's a little bit green or a little bit um just uh, coming up to the level or um has confirmation yeah uh, confirmation issues or any of those sort of things right. um and my thought is that i am more forgiving if i don't feel i would have to go backwards to train it on in other words um say so the horse isn't quite um uh, in an uphill balance enough if the rider puts the neck up so that the um the back is tight and you're thinking well i think i'd need to work that with its head on the floor for for a month um i'm less forgiving for that than the horse going and you just think well i just need to keep going you know and, and keep keep my training going Sure. Right. So also, it's about if the training's been, if you feel the training's been going well, then yeah. you're going to be willing to say, okay, this is where this horse is. And yeah. with time, it will be to where we would like it to be. That makes sense. Exactly. <clears throat> and so it, it won't necessarily, it won't get the sort of eights, nines, tens, but it can, it, 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 you would be thinking if you're dithering between marks, you'd be, um, up the half mark, not down the half mark as it were um you know and you'd be thinking in a more positive way whereas if there's a a training issue um you're going to be a bit tougher and, and i appreciate that that gives us a lot of insight and and so i guess there's a lot there's a lot going on in our sport and and i i'm actually just hit, uh listened to sam watson talk a little bit about of what his concept is a lot of people are saying that our sport's going the wrong direction and it's actually a really good clip that i got listening to him what do you feel we need to do to continue a positive step forward to include safety on the cross country a fair competitive field in the dressage and really making our sport like it kind of used to be we kind of uh, i'll go back to how it used to be where dressage was the biggest influence. And now what we're seeing, Sam said, the two star, um, the, the cross country influence is about 20% as opposed to, to when you get to the five star, when it's more like 56%. Um, do you see any way of, of making it a level or making it so cross country is more influential and we keep it where the dressage and the show jump just happen to be 25% each of, of our sport? I think at the lower levels, there's, there's not a lot you can do about it because you can only ask so much of the horses um, right. and the riders at the level they're at. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a car crash. Um, and so I think from the influence point of view, you want to be looking at the four and five star level. Um, and, um, um, you know, and there you're, you've, needs at every level it needs to be correct for the level right. um um and so, so you, you've got the progression do you like this concept sam sam and i think john we probably should get sam back on as well because he he's a stats guy and he looks at statistics it's really cool to listen to him talk about our sport and give us like real statistics so his one idea annabelle and let me know what you think is that to cap the dressage at you couldn't get anything better than a 25. So you cap it. If if there somebody was getting an 18, it would go back to the 25 and you cap it. And then the other two, you use it as those are, and you would add to your scores. You go through that. Do you, I, for me, I'm trying to wrap, wrap my brain around it and trying to figure that out. Um, what do you feel about that? Well, I, I, um, 
no, I, I don't agree with that because I think um, um, you get the, the, the people who train their horses very well um, and um, uh, what benefit have they got for, for doing a good job? Um, I mean, it's a good point. And and also, um, when when eventing started, it was it was um, um, it was about the well trained horse that could go cross country and then come out fresh sure the next know. day to jump. Um, and I think um, if we tinker with that too much, um, you're losing actually the the concept. It's quite I, I appreciate it's quite difficult to get enough of an influence for the cross country, but. Um, um, but I think um, I think as judges, we have to be very responsible that we don't get lulled into the um, rewarding, very flashy horses um, yeah. th that are not necessarily particularly well trained um, or, or get away with a certain amount of their flash. Um, do you, do you agree with that, and, and I think we have to be a very sure. He's yeah, sorry, we broke, we broke <laughs> up right, a little bit. Little little finish bit. your thought. Yeah, finish that thought. You were right on the flashy. Yeah, um, um it, it, an event horse should be bought for its ability to gallop and jump. Um, um, and then it's the training that makes the the dressage and um. Um, so there will be some fairly average movers, um, but if they're very well trained, they're more than capable of getting 7.5 and 8. And I think we need to be, as judges, very aware of uh, not condemning them because they're bad movers I and equally it. taking into account um, uh, flaws and, and shortcomings of the horses that look spectacular. Wow. I think that's great insight. And to everybody that is listening and not watching, John and I are shaking our heads. Yes. In agreement with Annabelle <laughs> on what you just said. Um, John, any closing thoughts? No, I mean, I just think it's great insight. That's kind of why we wanted to do this episode, Annabelle, because we do get as riders, which, you know, we all think of ourselves as riders in this sport, whether we're an official or a um, but, but, yeah. or a competitor right that's why we all mm. got into this um, exactly. but I think the longer you're into it the more you officiate the more we start to sometimes feel like there's this separation of you know us and them and I think that's true in all sports I follow American football and we feel that as fans watching that the same thing it's, it's something that happens in all sports and I think one of the things that we're trying to do and I think you did an excellent job of is making us realize we're all actually in this coming from a very similar place because we love the sport. We want to see the sport be successful. We love the horses. And um, I just appreciate you coming on. I always enjoy having you as an official at an event because I know that I'm going to get a fair shot. And um, I just, you know, thanks for coming on and doing this for us. I, no, no I, problem at all. <laughs> I did know that. Um, I mean, you you may not like, uh, or riders may not like what I I do, but they can they can guarantee it's done with honesty and and integrity and 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 for their good, you know. Um, there's no point in giving someone eights and nines when it's when it's only fairly good because uh, it doesn't do them any favors in the long run. I mean, I don't mind if you want to give me eights and nines. That's totally cool. But otherwise, I agree. <laughs> well, you have to earn them. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. When do we get to see you over in America again? When I next get asked. Okay. Oh, well, well, you guys heard there. it here. We want Annabelle. She's a great judge, like legit, a great judge. She was the first person we reached out to and we were thrilled that, uh, that you agreed to come on. So thank you. No, my pleasure. All thanks, right. Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle, Rick, thanks so much, guys. It was a great show. And um, the next one, Rick, is going to be the Christmas, Christmas show. I don't have a Christmas sweater yet. Um, I, well, I've I got have... 20, 25 of them up in the closet. From yeah, the that's good. We got to get some new ones. I feel like we keep recycling them every year. So we got to get some some new Christmas sweaters this year uh, or at least alternate them between us like we did last year. So uh, thanks so much, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Horse Trailer Pros for being such a great supporter of this 
show. We would not be able to do it without them. Thank you to Stressless for our awesome studio and our virtual studio. We truly appreciate it. Go to centerlinedistribution.net. Use the promo code JR23. And with that said, we'll be here for the uh, holiday special in a couple weeks' time. We have an awesome show for you guys today. The greatest defender of all time. Good news for the sport.